So we'll miss a couple of data points on that one and I'll just say sorry. All right, so how much more do I put on another 200? So I just add another 200 on there? Yeah. All right, so. Yeah, 1300 now. It's 500, 400, and 400. So yeah, 1300. It's easier to pull, but there's not very much friction, so. Right around four, four and a half. Yeah, I'd probably err on four and a half on that. So here's another 200. So now an extra 200 on there. Okay, so I guess five point five. Rather four point five. Yeah, I think it's four point five. I don't think it's five point five. Yeah, but the last no, bit, that was five point five. I mean four point five. So no. it didn't move. I put the last two hundred gram weight up there. So now it's the cart's definitely full. Five point five. How much yep. weight do you have on there right now? Okay, I have five hundred, four hundred, four hundred, two hundred, two hundred. Okay. Now I do want you to see something while you're watching. I'm not sure I did this yesterday, but watch the, the gauge. I'm gonna pull the cart and get it started. You should see the gauge go way beyond that five, five and a half we had. Maybe not way beyond, but go beyond it. And then the moment it starts the cart moving, it'll snap back to about five. You guys see that? How it takes more friction to get it started, but once it's started, it goes back to where it was. So here, let me see if I can get that on the screen better. So it's a little hard to see from where you are. Let me give you a little more space. So you can kind of see that it takes a little more to break the static friction, and then it comes back to where it was for kinetic friction. So, but let's go ahead and do the skinny side now. Okay, so I'm getting all the weight off the cart. And I'll put it on the skinny side now. So, I'm gonna put this up here so you can see it a little easier. The skinny side is not gonna be as easy for me, but it should be okay. I'm gonna start with 500 grams again. It's gotta balance it better. Okay, this is 500 grams. Looks like two, one and a half. That's day 1.75. So, when it's moving, it looks like it's more like one and a half than 1.75. I'm putting 400 more grams on. Okay. Here we go. Right on three. Okay, I'm gonna put another 400 grams on. So this is what we got now. I didn't 
I would say four. Because it kind of moved a little forward, but I would say it's four. Okay. And um, I'm putting another 200 on. Is that good? Would you say 4.5 or 5? Because I can't really tell. I, don't know, I can't really see the number because of the way I'm holding it, but I'd say 4.5 probably. How much weight do you got on there right now? Um, 500, 400, 400, and 200. So I'm putting the last, the last 200 on there. You see that okay? It was at 5.5. 5. Mm. Yeah, I think yeah, I think I grabbed it and then I just kind of softened it. So let me make sure. Yeah, it's definitely 5.5. 5. Okay, I think that's all of the different options, right? Hey, actually, I think we need to repeat the first uh, like three weights with just the wood side because I think we started out yesterday uh, on the felt white side and we repeated it all again. Like, yeah. I was thinking that too. I was like, I don't think we were on wood side. Yeah, we had to repeat on the wood side just like the first three times and then, and then we'll be done with all okay. the data. All right, so wood side down, 500 grams on. Is that what you're saying? Like that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. So wood side down, 500 grams. I'm in a different place in the table, though. Let me, there's all this debris on the table. Let me get it off. Okay. Is that three or three point five? Um, I think it's between three and three point five. So four hundred grams. So I added four hundred grams to it. Uh, can you only add 200 since we've already done this data set, but we just have the round one? Sure. So here is 500 and 200. It was like right there. Yeah. But this data is rough because the table is just very inconsistent. So how much do I have to put on there now? 200 again. Okay, so. All right, here we go. You guys in class are, oh, you guys in class are about done? Yeah. Okay, this is our last data set. Uh, something wrong with the surface. Keep hitting something on here that's making it go weird. I'm trying, guys. One more time. Jeez. 
All right, that's it for sure. Right about five. All right, that's it, right, guys? All right, guys, we're going to get ready to start talking about the lab write up. So I'm going to move, the, move these guys back over here. And there we go. So everybody has a couple sets of data now. Can we get there in the white now? The first two switches, the red one and the first switch after. Thank you. All right. Let me get my stuff back where it is. We're supposed to go. All right. All right, so you guys are talking about the data. Um, I think that the wood data that I gave you is probably not very good. There's something different about the table from today compared to yesterday. It's just not the same. It's really sticky. So we might have to scrap the wood data. I might have to get it from someplace else. So let's talk the lab right up. Give me a second. Plug in my iPad. All right. There. All right, so I wanna to talk to you about how the write-up is gonna be done and a little bit about how I expect to see you guys turn in your laps. So let me reiterate something very important to me. And that is that ultimately, my expectation is that your lab is a, is a grade boosting assignment. And I wanna be really clear, second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter, there are no of those beginning of the year kind of cushion assignments now. So you need the lab's assignments. And I don't want you to turn anything in that isn't going to be an A. So if you turn something in that's garbage, I'm just gonna put a zero down and hand it back to you till you turn it in right. And I'm not going to be on you about it, but you're going to hold on to that zero until the lab comes in perfect. So let me get all the eyeballs on me real quick, not down at the table. Do we understand each other? You guys at home, do you understand that too? You need this grade. So there'll be several labs per quarter. I'm hoping to do more, a lot more of them, but please understand it. I'm just not going to read and use my time to critique your bad labs. Make them perfect. So if it's bad, I'm just gonna say this is not done correctly. Take it back, do it again. So we're gonna to talk today about how I want the data and analysis presented to me. Those are the last two parts of the, of the, the lab. Um, section four of the lab kind of tells me what you're going to do with the numbers, but five and six is where you execute that. Almost every single lab we do in here is going to end with you guys finding the slope of a set of data. Be very clear about that from the beginning. And this is where your pencil should probably start. Every single lab is going to end with you finding the slope of a set of data. So if you haven't done that, your lab is incomplete. And in the beginning, I'll help you figure out what it is that you need to do, what you're gonna graph and how it should look. But by the end, no, I'm not gonna do any of that. But you should note that almost every single lab in here, in fact, I can't think of one right now where at the end of the lab, you don't have a set of data to which you are throwing down a straight edge, drawing in a line and finding its slope. So if you haven't done that by the end of a lab, you should probably question whether you actually know what you're doing on that lab or not. So let's start with the data section of the lab. First, I should expect to see a raw data chart. Something clearly labeled. You know, for us, that's gonna be, you know, we measured something from the spring scale. 
and we had the mass that we put on the object, and maybe the object was a shoe. So in our group, the shoe was like 180 grams. I can't remember exactly what it was. And we added 500 grams to the shoe for the first measurement. And then I can't remember what we actually got, but I'm gonna say we measured 3.5 Newtons off the spring scale. Now, we then added, can't remember how much, but it doesn't matter, this is sample data. So like 200 each time. And we subsequently had, you know, some kind of increase each time. And I, this is not real data. I'm just making up the numbers real quick. The important detail here is that you should present a raw data set, which is exactly what was read off of your measuring devices or what was stamped on the masses. Yes, ma'am. There should be no calculation done on this first data set. You're gonna do some calculation later, but right now it should be just the raw data presented in a neat and organized fashion. Um, just gonna tell you guys that if you turned this in as your data set, it would not receive full credit. And the reason is because A, my handwriting's a little sloppy, not terribly so, but I should have thought a little bit more about this just to make it neat. But the most important thing is I did not take time to draw the lines nice and straight. You should, you should grab a ruler and carefully lay your data out. Part of what I'm looking for here is your ability to present things cleanly and neatly. If you can't do that, you're not gonna get credit. I'm gonna hand it back to you and say, do this over again. And it's not because I'm so terribly nitpicky, it's because when we actually have to turn this into the AP graders, there should be some attention paid to detail. So your first data chart is pure raw data. But I'll remind you, in section two of the lab, we talked about what we are measuring and why. For example, there's a discussion that indicates we're using the spring scale because we know that the spring scale is telling us the same size as the frictional force. So we're using the spring scale to determine the frictional force. So friction comes from spring scale measurement. And we're just taking it right off of the chart. We don't have to do anything to the spring scale measurement because we believed those were the same. However, the mass isn't the normal force. We know that. We need to make sure the mass is converted to the weight and then the weight and the normal force were equal. So although we want the normal force, what we're actually gonna do is convert the mass to a weight. So you'll notice in this chart, what I'm actually doing is I'm putting what we want to have and how we're getting that from our raw data set. So the 3.5, I, I can just write, that's no big deal. But the masses, I got to do some work on them. I've got to take the 500 grams, add the 180 grams, for the shoe, I've got to divide all of this by a thousand to get this into kilograms and then multiply all of this by 9.8. Whatever that is, will get written here. And I have to do that for every piece of data that I have. So in your analysis, 
there should be this kind of information. My expectation is that you'll have a set of numbers here, whatever they are. You'll get them from calculating. The first number should have a sample calculation provided for how you calculated that first number. I do not need to see this written out for every number. I need to see it written out for one number. The rest of it, I would assume you just do real fast in your calculator. But you should show me what it is you did to take this number and convert it to what you need. Does everybody understand? One sample calculation. Now, if you're doing the same sample calculation for every set of data, I probably don't need to see it more than once. You do not have to show every single calculation for every single number, but you do have to show one of them and it needs to be clear. Your data chart should include units for at least the top two numbers, or you can bury it up here in the heading. But notice that my heading has in it what each of these represents and where it comes from. So I should see the heading of friction and spring scale measurement underneath that. The heading of normal force, because I converted the mass to a weight. I should see that up there in the top of my data chart. Yes, sir. Yep, however you want to lay it out, it's fine with me. That part I'm not particular about. I'm just particular about you providing this information to me. All right, so that is the data portion. Now, our goal in this lab was to find the coefficient of friction. In order to you know, find the coefficient of friction, we are looking at a relationship that relates the frictional force to the normal force. Some students feel like they could just take every one of the friction numbers and divide by every one of the normal force numbers. Guarantee if you do that, you get a zero. I'll hand it right back to you. That is not how science works. Science looks for trends and analyzes the trends. So although this is a true expression, we're gonna use it different. You have to follow a process called linearization of data. And we're gonna learn different methods to linearize data. Today, you're gonna to learn process number one for linearization of data. But all processes for linearizing data end with a straight edge, drawing a best fit line and finding the slope. All of them. They all end there. So no matter what we talk about for the next few minutes, understand that this process will always end with you having a set of data that should be linear, that you will plot, draw a best fit line through and find the slope. So let's talk about process number one. This is the easiest. This works for half of all instances of linearization which is great because you know it's, it's easy to do. Step one is to identify the relationship that you're using. You've already done that. This one's really easy. So for this lab, that's friction equals mu times the normal force. Next, solve your relationship for the featured variable. Pretty straightforward, just like we did a minute ago. Step number three, you're gonna plot the numerator on the y-axis and the denominator on the x-axis.
So whatever's up here, it goes on the y-axis. Whatever's down here, it goes on the x-axis. So you go back, you know, you look at your data chart, that's telling you which part of the graph those numbers go on. So this becomes an ordered pair. And in this ordered pair, the left side, the frictional part, is going on the y-axis. The normal force is going on the x-axis. If you do that, bless you. That was a sneeze, right? Just checking. It's one of those dainty sneezes. I say, I say go all the way with the sneeze. Uh, four is all the way at the bottom, but step four is plot your best fit line. The slope. is your variable. So you plot your best fit line and your slope is your featured variable. So that is process number one. It's really easy and it works for about half of all of our formulas, but it only works for about half. And you can tell if it's gonna work. So this is a side note, but you can tell if process number one is gonna work if something you measured is in the numerator and something different you measured is in the denominator. It might be more complicated than this, but again, you can tell if it's going to work if something you measured is in the numerator and something different you measured is in the denominator. There will definitely be examples where you will not be able to use this process. It does not work for inverse functions. It does not work for things where the y-intercept is important. So those are cases where we can't use process number one. And that's quite a few things, but it's gonna work for this one. So that means to me that I'm going to see several of these graphs in your lab. Somebody asked, can we put them all on the same graph? In this case, you probably could because you're graphing the same thing each time and you probably will have the same scale. However, every graph should have a couple of characteristics. They should have a title. Just tell me what you're graphing. They should have axes that are clearly labeled. The numbers should always start from zero on the bottom of the axes. Every, gra every graph in here. The numbers should start from zero. There should be even increments that encompass the entire data set. Most of you probably went you know, zero to maybe six Newtons, probably it. And again, even increments. They don't have to have the same increments on the x-axis and the y-axis, but you do have to have even increments. There are no breaks in our scale, in our, in our uh, axes. You can't jump from one number to the next. You have to go in an even amount. Our axes are linear, so they are number lines. Does everybody understand? So I don't care how convenient it is, and I don't care if the software you decide to use to make your graph does it automatically and scales it. You've got to make it stop. Every graph starts from zero. You graph your data points, they should be linear-ish, but they won't be perfect. It's a lot. They should be linear-ish because you've forced the graph to look linear. Grab a straight edge and draw your best fit line for your data points. Do not, under any circumstances, connect the dots. You connect the dots, you fail the lab. It's that simple. So, and if your graphing package connects the dots because you did it on Excel, you better turn that off. I will not accept it. So either way, the slope of this line should be our coefficient. <laughs> you should clearly show the best fit line in your calculation of the slope.
The end of this lab ends when you tell me what your coefficient of friction was. But like I said, somebody asked in another class if you could graph more than one data set. Sure, you can graph more than one data set. However, you better make it clear to me, I'm old. You better make it clear to me each individual data set. Color coding's fine, but it should be clear. Yes, ma'am. You can, that's fine too. So, um, you know, my expectation is that you're graphing all of your data sets. Generally, you won't be able to graph them all in the same graph. Normally, the graphs are going to be different things. Normally, it's not that many graphs per lab anyways. This one has a lot because you have a set of data for each different surface. But if you want to put them all the same on the same graph, because you can, and you're, you're smart enough to figure that out, I'm fine with that. That's less work for you, and I'm okay with that. Now, let's talk about a few things about this lab, but are there any questions about the process of what I'm expecting for your lab. All right, so there will be a form on Canvas that I'd like you to follow, but you can actually do your lab in any way that you would like. A couple of things you should keep in mind. Coefficient of friction is a number that's less than one. If your slope is greater than one, you have probably made a mistake. This lab should fall right in line with expectations. Next, all of you measured the same things. So when it comes to things like felt, we should all have about the same answer. The shoe, maybe not. And my numbers will probably be different than your numbers because I had slate as my second surface, you had wood. So I'm not sure you can compare the folks who have data at home with your data. And I'm afraid the slate has reacted with the chemical too, so it made the wood surface pretty bad. But at the same time, you should see a coefficient that's obvious and it should be less than one. So if you get numbers greater than one, I'm thinking you probably made a mistake. And you can tell which of these should have been higher and which of these should have been lower. It should clearly have been harder to pull the shoe than to pull the felt side of the block. So you should see the shoe having a steeper slope than the felt. So there's some obvious things you should see in your data. If you don't see those things, you've done it wrong. Go back and look at your work. There's nothing wrong with making a mistake, but catch these mistakes. Some of them are easy to catch. Labs generally end when you've told me what your slope is and what the meaning of the slope is. So don't just say slope equals this. Then the lab should be the coefficient of friction for this was this number. And I got that from the slope of this graph. I should see a statement at the end that tells me what it is you are trying to find from step one of the lab. So at the end of the analysis, I should see that. If I just say see slope equals 0.3, I'm handing it back to you. That's a zero. You need to tell me your results. I will almost always give you a follow-up question and I'll expect you guys to give me a sentence or two in its answer. Here's your follow-up question. Does the surface area impact the coefficient of friction? Does the surface area impact the coefficient of friction. Your answer to that question should have a sentence or two in response, an explanation, but it should be based on your data. You should have data that you can compare to tell me if the surface area impacts the coefficient of friction. You should have done the wide side and the narrow side of the felt. So find the coefficients and see if they, if they are in agreement. My expectation is that they should be, but you should base your answer on your data. All right, that's it for the lab. Generally, I make labs due three days after the last day you took data. I don't count weekends in those numbers, which today being Friday means Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday should be the due date of the lab. I allowed first period to tell me whether it would be better for them to turn in Wednesday or Thursday. As expected, because kids like to procrastinate, they jumped on Thursday. It's fine by me. I really don't care when the lab gets turned in. However, I'm not going to accept it Friday. So once that window closes, the zero's there for good. Labs have to be in on time. Turn something in. If you turn in garbage, though, I will say that that's just the same thing as not turning it in at all. 
If you turn in a solid effort, but it's not going to be up to my expectations, I will let you resubmit it. But only under those only under those circumstances. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. I couldn't hear you. Part four of the lab. That's a pretty big category. That's right. You need to describe to me what you're going to do with the data to get to the, the, the featured variable that we're trying to find. So basically, this whole explanation I've given you is section four of your lab. It's you stating that to me. Now, five and six is the execution of that. Does that make sense? Okay. So um, you can turn it in Thursday. That's fine by me. If you want me to read yours ahead of time, send it to me. I'll tell you if it's going to be acceptable or not. That way you'll know whether you have to redo it or not. If it's on my, but if it's not turned into Canvas by the end of the day on Thursday, you will get the zero. All right. I'm just not going to, I don't have time to mess with, chase you down for labs. Um, you need these Cush credit. You need the Cush credit. This is it. This is the Cush credit you get this year. Yeah. I'll probably post the outline this afternoon. Yes, ma'am. You may type your labs, that's fine. Any other questions? Yeah, I type faster than I write. Okay, then I need to show you guys something. I'm gonna stop recording because I don't care anymore. <laughs>